Over recent decades, Florentino Perez and Joan Laporta have often been on opposite sides as Real Madrid and Barcelona have battled for domination of La Liga. And often for the Champions League trophy too. But events have driven them and their clubs together, and these two historic rivals have become intertwined in a new story which has huge consequences for the future of Spanish and European football. But why has this happened? The most high-profile commitment now binding Barcelona and Real Madrid together is their shared and continuing obstinance over the European Super League. Madrid backing the whole project is no surprise, as Perez has been pushing the idea for decades, arguing that it was the only way his member-owned institution can compete fairly with clubs elsewhere in Europe, whose funding comes from outside football and even from the wealth of nation-states. Manchester City beat Real Madrid and Barcelona to top Deloitte's Money League for the first time last year, with a revenue of nearly €650 million Euros in 2021, up 17% from 2020. In the same period, Madrid's revenue fell by 7% and Barcelona's dropped by 18%. City's transfer expenditure of €219 million Euros was significantly more than Madrid's 45 and Barcelona's 91. Barcelona were not so openly committed to breaking away, although recent presidents including Laporta, Sandro Rossell and Josep Bartomeu have rarely missed a chance to criticise UEFA's running of the European club competitions. There was still general surprise in October 2020 when Bartomeu, just as he was resigning in disgrace after a series of on- and off-pitch disasters, announced Barca's willingness to participate in the future Super League, although some insiders claim not to be shocked at all. During the elections to succeed Bartomeu, all candidates knew what would play best with the voting socios, as Barcelona's club members are known. The Super League is just about money. It could destroy the essence of football, Laporta said in January 2021, before being elected. But then, just a few weeks later, the Catalan club were one of the 12 founding members of the new Super League project, which would have Madrid's Perez as its president and guiding light. Ultimately, the project quickly unravelled amid angry protests in England. But there was little such outcry in Catalonia. Barcelona's huge debts of more than 1.3 billion euros meant they could not afford to look a gift horse in the mouth. So, even as everyone else except Juventus of Italy drifted back from the Super League idea, Barcelona and Laporta became firm backers. And last summer, it was clear how the two clubs shared support for a Super League had detached them from their peers. The political situation meant no other European clubs would even play them in a friendly last summer. Instead, they organised a US Clasico in Las Vegas. Barcelona even had trouble finding suitable opponents for their traditional pre-season Trofeo Gamper curtain raiser at Camp Nou. But still, Laporta has not wavered. Indeed, over time, he has become much more publicly supportive of the Super League project. He even went further in an interview with Spain's Cadena SER radio station in January, saying the Super League would be a reality in 2025, despite a December legal opinion from the European Court of Justice stating the rules of UEFA and FIFA, the World Games governing body, are compatible with EU law. But the Super League is not the only area in which Barca and Madrid have allied together in recent years. They've also grown increasingly close in domestic political battles against Javier Tebas, the La Liga president. The Clasico duo have often opposed his policies, which they feel do not reward them sufficiently for generating about half the total business of all Spanish football. Almost a decade of PR and legal battles culminated in December 2021, with Barcelona and Real Madrid refusing to enter into the 2.7 billion La Liga boost partnership deal agreed with European private equity firm CVC Partners. Barcelona instead did a similar standalone deal last summer, although with different financial details, with US financiers Sixth Street, which brought in 517 million euros to fill holes in the club's finances. The arrangement was organised by Key Capital Partners, the financial backer of the Super League project, which two months earlier had agreed a €360 million Euro financing deal with Sixth Street to fund the renovation of Madrid's Bernabeu. Florentina Perez comes to the rescue of Barcelona to save the Super League, smirked a Madrid business press headline. Through the autumn, the Clasico duo were again allied together against most other clubs in La Liga in a battle to influence the Spanish government's new general sports law. 
Perez was able to use his considerable political contacts to get the law's wording amended to favour the interests of Real Madrid and Barcelona over everyone else, which led to a concerted lobbying campaign by Tebas and many other Spanish clubs to protect more equality within the legislation. The new law ended up as a fudge which left neither side fully happy. And the isolation of the two clubs within Spanish football was shown again in December, when they both boycotted a la Liga organised trip designed to build business links in the Middle East. Some Barcelona figures had initially planned to go, Tebas told reporters while at the World Cup in Qatar. But then I guess a call came from you-know-who, Florentino, and they fell into line, he said, relishing the opportunity to point out the uncomfortable. Neither club now have any representation on the important La Liga subcommittees made up of directors and executives from other teams. Instead, they often send a proxy to argue their case as decisions are being taken. And of course, such isolation has consequences. In November, La Liga's other 18 clubs agreed to tweak the league's salary rules. Changes which Barcelona feel were directed at them specifically and hampers their ongoing fight to fix their finances. The idea of Real Madrid and Barcelona as bitter enemies has always been something for the media and the fans more than the directors of the clubs themselves. Perez and Laporta had cordial relations during the latter's first term. Legend also has it that when Perez spilt something on his tie during a pre-game dinner near the Camp Nou, his Barcelona counterparts arranged for a tailor to arrive quickly with a selection of replacements. Once, when Sandro Rossell was being insulted by Madrid fans near the Bernabeu's VIP zone, Perez arranged for the season ticket holders involved to be moved permanently to another part of the stadium. But there is still something new and different about just how close the two clubs have become. They've always shared many strengths and insecurities, but now the fates of the Catalan outsiders and the Madrid conservatives have become completely entwined. What this means for the future of both, and for Spanish and European football, remains to be seen. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.